This lesson continues from the previous one, Unit Testing Components. If you want to follow along with the examples, you'll need a basic app with Vuex and the Jest Unit Testing Package installed. For our examples, we've set up an empty store in source slash store slash index.js. For the tests, we'll use the example test file in tests slash unit slash example dot spec. Before we continue, it should be noted that this lesson is only for Vuex version 4. We're including it here for completeness because many current and some older code bases are still using it. If you're working for an enterprise that hasn't upgraded to the newer Vuex yet, known as Pinia, you may find it useful. We cover Pinia later on in the course, so don't worry about it at the moment. When testing mutations, we should check that a state object was mutated correctly. They're simple to test because they're regular JavaScript functions and just need to be invoked for us to test the effect. We don't invoke them directly though, we commit a mutation and Vue will invoke the function behind the scenes. As an example, we'll use an increment mutation in the store that increases a counter by one when it's invoked. In the test, we'll commit the increment mutation and test if count went up from zero to one. If we run the test in the terminal, it passes. It's important to remember that we're working with saved state. That means that stored data will be persistent between tests. As an example, let's add a decrement mutation to the store. In the test, we'll add another block and check if count decrements from 0 to negative 1. But, when we run the test, it'll fail. From the output, we can see that Jest expected negative 1 but received 0. That's because the count property state was saved after the first test. So, this test started to decrement from 1 instead of 0. In some situations, that may be the behavior we want, but if it's not, a simple solution is to reset any test data before each test with the before each utility method. If we run the test again, it'll pass because it started the test from 0 instead of 1. Another problem with using a real store is that if we import it into a file that contains multiple tests, the data will be shared by all the tests. This will cause the same problem as earlier, where tests end up with unexpected values. A solution to this problem is to create a local store for each test that contains only what we want to test. We create our local store inside the test block with the createStore method from the Vuex package. We don't need to recreate the whole store, only the parts we want to test. As an example, let's create a local store that stores the count state and increments it with the increment mutation. Everything is the same as when we used the real store, except this time, we commit the local store's mutation and test its effect. If we run the test in the terminal, it passes without any issues. In the Vuex lesson, we learned that we don't want to access state data properties directly. Instead, we want to use a getter function to return the value of that property. A getter just returns a value, so we test that value before or after it's been mutated. We access a getter through the getter's property on an imported or local store. Then, we chain the name of the getter we want to it. As an example for the imported store, we'll add a getter function to the store that returns count. Then, we use store.getters.getCount instead of store.state.count in the test. If we run the test, it passes without any problems. 
To demonstrate the local store, we'll use the exact same store code, but inside the test block. The test is the same, except for the fact that it uses a local store instance, instead of the real one. So, when we run the test, it passes like we expect. In the next video, we'll learn how to unit test routing. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.